This video is for an EasyGo TXT PDS. And I was having an ambient temperature problem with this thing. In other words, uh, when we went to the lake uh, and this thing sit out in the sun, it, I'd push the gas pedal and nothing would happen. It was almost like the key was off. And I know there's some other videos on here and, and if you're searching for, uh, for problems with EasyGo TXT PDS, you're probably gonna hear, try the reed switch. It's most likely the reed switch. Well, here's my reed switch. It had already been bypassed. Um, so I moved on to double check the key, check the forward and reverse. Um, I even went to check the ITS and the pedal switch also. Um, most of those tested good. I replaced a couple of them anyways, just thinking or hoping that it could be something different. Um, this thing just about wore me out. I'd put it back together, try it again. And really when I parked this cart north and south, um, with the front facing north and, and the sun setting in the west, getting good afternoon sun right here and all on this floorboard is when I would have the problem with the cart not wanting to work. It was almost like the key was off. I'd push the switch, nothing would happen. And, uh, and there really wasn't anything that I could change or do to make it work, except just let, let it cool off. Uh, the next morning, it worked great. I'd even test the batteries when this happened, and the batteries had full voltage. Uh, pedal switch was good, ITS switch was good, key switch was good, forward and reverse switch were good, both good too. So that led me to this box. <clears throat> if you can see here, this box right there, it's a Curtis 1206 MX. It's a 350 amp controller. And uh, so I got to testing this and I'll put the link of, of all the different diagnostic tests you can do to, to check these wires and, and the pins and all that stuff um, in the link of this video. But one thing I figured out when I had my uh, card on jack stands was there's a, there's a four pin connector right here. And I'll unplug it so you can, so you can see it here. So that four pin connector, if I had the gas pedal down and I smashed that four pin connector back in there, the cart would go, which is kind of odd. But as soon as I let off, it wouldn't work anymore. So uh, one thing that I, that I forgot to mention, sorry I'm bouncing around here, one thing I forgot to mention was I changed out the solenoid also. Um, when I was pushing that pedal, I wasn't getting a click in the solenoid. So I changed that out, um, did it a couple of times. It seemed like it worked for a day or two. Um, and then it went right back to uh, when the temperature got hot, the cart quit working. Um, so back to my four pin switch here story. I would uh, have the gas pedal mashed down and I'd poke that switch back in there and the cart wheels would start spinning. But as soon as I let off the pedal, it, it quit working again. So what I, what I ended up figuring out is that my Curtis controller was bad. So I took all of these wires loose and I took all this, these pins out and unplugged everything. Got this thing on my workshop bench and I really wish I would have recorded this, uh, but there's another video that tells you how to, to disassemble these Curtis controllers. And you can tell right there, I've got a little scarring from my screwdriver. But essentially you start on this line and you just start prying it back all around the top and then you go down the side and then you go over to the other side and you pry down that top and down that side and you can eventually get that top off of that Curtis controller and what I found is right behind that four pin switch down there uh, there was four diodes that st stick up kind of like this right there T the middle two were like this with just enough room when it was cool that I guess they weren't touching and it was working. It was kind of like that. But when it got hot, they swelled together and it wouldn't work. So I straightened all those back out like that, reassembled my box, popped it back in here. Just kind of wanted to see if it would work. I'd pretty much already figured out I was $500 out of pocket to buy this controller and I really didn't care if I tore it up. I just wanted to confirm my theory. Um, so I popped it all back in, put it all back together and, uh, and I let it sit out in the sun. Well, the sun's shining on this side. <clears throat> it was about 102 today, and uh, the cart worked perfect. So I think I fixed my problem. Um, you know, if this helps one person out there, it's worth it to me. I, 
I get a lot of free information off of YouTube and you know, I looked and looked and wished and I just kind of was hoping that there would be some video out there like this that would give me some little tidbit of information that, you know, give me the confidence to crack that thing open. So um, I'll post all the diagnostic stuff in the comment section below. And I also post a link to the video that shows you how to crack that, that Curtis box open. But I kind of wonder sometimes that if people don't replace those controllers without cracking them open and looking at it. Um, I mean, not that you're always going to be able to just move some fins around in there. Um, but those little capacitors couldn't have been easier to fix. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If I see it, I'll circle back around and, and try to comment on it. And anything I can do to help anybody out, I'm happy to do. Hey, thanks.